was talking today to someone who likes to get exercise by riding a bike. And recently a number of her acquaintances have had really bad bike accidents. And she was getting concerned. She's getting older now. And seeing how badly mangled her friends were, she's beginning to worry about herself. Maybe she should stop riding the bike. And she'd mentioned this to a friend of hers. And the friend said, oh no, don't think about accidents. We create our own reality. If you think about accidents, you'll make them happen. But if you don't think about accidents, they won't happen. It's kind of a Barney the Dinosaur approach to the world. If it were true, then nobody would age, nobody would die. I mean, most people die are not thinking about death. Most people get sick or not thinking about illness. These things happen because of past karma. We have all kinds of karma in our past, good and bad. And it's a combination of past karma and present karma that actually shapes our experience. If we could totally shape our present experience, who would suffer in this world? Or as the Buddha said, if we got things just by wishing or praying, who in the world would be old, who in the world would be sick, who in the world would be poor or ugly? You can't just wish our way or imagine our way into perfect health, youth, and continued life. Because we've got our past actions, and they're having an influence. We've already chosen to be born as human beings. And maybe we didn't look at the fine print in the contract, but part of being a human being is that you, if you live long enough, you get old, you're going to get sick, and you're going to die for sure. And thinking about that doesn't make you die. The reason the Buddha has you think about it is because you have to prepare. You have to be heedful. So even though you can't do anything about your past karma, you can do something about your present karma. And that's why we meditate. And that's our present karma right now. You're here to focus on the present moment and particularly focus on the breath. When you breathe in, and Breathe in a couple of times really deep to see how it feels. And notice where you feel the breathing in the body. When we talk about focusing on the breath, it's not so much the air coming in and out of the lungs, it's more the sensation of energy that flows through the body as you breathe in, because it's not just coming through the nose and into the lungs, but you feel the energy go all the way down through the torso. Your shoulders are involved, your chest muscles, your back muscles. And as you get more and more sensitive to the breathing in the body, you begin to realize that your whole nervous system can be involved in the breathing. In fact, the more you let the sense of energy flow throughout all your nerves and all the muscles of the body, the more comfortable the breathing will be. You want it to be comfortable so, so that the mind will be inclined to want to stay in the present moment, because this is where our work is. Because regardless of the fact that we can't do anything about our past karma, we are constantly creating present karma, so you want to be always creating good karma in the present. And this distinction between past karma and present karma also relates to suffering. There are two kinds of suffering. There's the simple suffering that comes from the fact that you're in a body that's going to change, it's going to age, grow ill, and die. Things all over the world are changing all the time. And because they're changing, there's stress in the change. And a lot of this is out of your control. That's why it's said to be not self. If it, were, if it were yourself, you could control it. But there's a lot of things you just can't control, even in your own body. But there are some things you can control. What you're deciding to do in the present moment, that's under your control. And that's related to a second kind of suffering. That's what the Buddha called this. It would be the suffering what's called the Four Noble Truths. And this suffering is optional. It doesn't have to be there. It comes from our own ignorance and it comes from our craving and clinging. And those things can be changed. 
We bring our awareness to the present moment to minimize our ignorance. And we try to look. And when we're acting in the present moment, and we're always acting, the mind is an acting process. What are we doing? Why are we acting? What are we acting for? You want to be able to see that clearly. And one of the best ways to see it clearly is to focus on your breath and maintain that intention to stay with the breath. Because intention is the action. What are your intentions right now? Okay, Stay with the breath. Stay with the breath. Try to make the breath comfortable. And you'll notice when you put this intention in your mind, you might stir up some other intentions. Think about something else. Worry about any pains you might feel in the body. And you've got to say, no, I'm just not going to go there. And think of those other intentions just dissolving away, dispersing, like air. Don't give them any more reality than they need to have. You want to give your full reality to your intention to stay here. It's only when you hold on to one intention that you begin to see how many intentions you have and where they can be pulling you. And you learn to say no. Now you strengthen that no by making your yes stay with the breath, and making the breath as interesting and comfortable as possible. Another one of the reasons why we work with the breath energy throughout the whole body is because once the breath gets comfortable, there's a tendency to drift off. If your range of awareness is narrow, but if your range of awareness is broad, you've got the whole body from the top of the head down to the tips of the toes. That's the range that you're aware of. Down to your feet, down to your hands, every part of the body. When you're fully occupying the body this way, you're much less likely to drift off. When your range of awareness is all around like this, you can begin to see things happening in your mind that you didn't notice before. It's you've got like a diffuse light that spreads throughout the body instead of one little spotlight on one little spot. Because if a spotlight is on one spot, everything else is put in the darkness. But here you've got this diffuse light that spreads throughout the body. So any thoughts that come up in the mind, any intentions, any questions, any comments, any complaints, you're going to see them, and you have to learn how not to run with them. You see them and just think of them going right through, like a breeze going through a screen on a window. The breeze doesn't move the screen. The screen doesn't stop the breeze. So thoughts go right through, but you stay with your main intention, which is to stay right here with the breath. As there are lessons to be learned by staying here. One is that you begin to see thoughts that come up, and instead of following your usual tendencies, just which is just to jump in any thought that comes and ride with it, you learn to question it. Where is this thought going? Where is it coming from? And with many thoughts, you don't have to ask very much. You can tell right away. This thought is going to lead to suffering. This thought is going to lead to harm, especially the thoughts that have a lot of craving and clinging. Because when you're sick, there's always be thoughts, I wish I weren't sick. Well, what is that thought going to do? Makes you miserable. You say, okay, given the fact that I am sick right now, or I have this problem or that problem, how do I deal with it so I don't have to suffer from it? If you learn not to identify with the things that are suffering, they're there, but you don't take them on as you or yours. That helps protect you from the suffering. You can say no to thoughts like that, because you've got the breath here that you're saying yes to. You've got the sense of just being aware in the present moment that doesn't have to be colored by the things that it knows or sees. All too often, our mind is like water. You put a little bit of green dye in the water, and all of a sudden the whole glass of water is green, or a little bit of red, and the whole glass becomes red. In other words, a thought or an idea or an emotion comes into the mind and all of a sudden it possesses the whole mind. So that's a habit you've got to have to unlearn. 
the thought can be there, but it doesn't have to have an impact on the mind. And your first step in that direction is to stay with the breath, stay with the sensation of the breathing throughout the body. And let your awareness be dyed by that. And the other thing can come, and you can just slip past, come and just slip past. It's like living in a world where you know there are snakes. You could sit here worried about all the snakes in the world, or you can say, well, whenever I meet a snake, I'm not going to pick it up. Wherever I meet a, meet a snake, I'm not going to provoke it. When you know how to handle the snakes that you encounter, then you can live in a world where there are snakes and yet not get bitten by the snakes. In the same way, we live in this human body. It's the result of our past karma. That's something you can't change. That's the suffering that's just a natural part of living in this conditioned world. But that suffering doesn't have to impinge on the mind. The suffering that weighs you down is the suffering that comes from what you're doing right now. So you want to learn how to do it differently so you don't suffer. You, you have the freedom to change, so that your actions in the present moment are done not with ignorance but with knowledge. And that way you can free yourself from the suffering that otherwise you'd feel. If you weren't skillful, we're working on a skill, how to know our minds in the present moment, so that even though we can't change everything we want to change, at the very least we can make the best of what we've got. But in particular, we can learn that we don't have to suffer at all. That's the Buddha's message. What this does is it puts a lot of power in your hands. You may not be able to prevent accidents or prevent death, but you can prevent yourself from the unskillful habits that make you suffer. You learn new skillful habits in their place. And working with the breath, getting sensitive to how the breath feels in the body, learning how to make it more comfortable, so it becomes a good home for the mind here in the present moment. That's one of the first important first steps on the skill of not suffering. 